Thank you. Uh, welcome uh, to MRCIS, and uh, I hope you enjoy yourself. And uh, I will speak about my experiences uh, working here at MRCIS. Uh, I didn't know much about DevOps before working here, and uh, MRCIS did, did some changes since I've been working here. So that's what I will try to present to you. My name is Gabor, and I've been working here for one and a half year as a developer. Uh, and it's been a wide ride, so it, lots of challenges we have faced. We are working together with wonderful people and uh, solved uh, wonderful uh, problems together. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I wanted to, to do this presentation, uh, I don't know how many of you do DevOps uh, at your job, but uh, I know that uh, it, it's hard to define. So I, I don't know if, what would you call DevOps, but uh, as, as the Wikipedia definition goes, it's, it's about collaboration, communication, and uh, automating things. Uh, from the agenda, we know that probably containerization and uh, continuous integration is involved too, but, but uh, I will try to show you what it means in practice. Uh, I've been working in, in these three teams. We are working in teams, and uh, these are products we, uh, that we do. MRC is a marketing company, so these are all related to marketing uh, activity. And uh, they are special in, uh, in a way that uh, Automation Center, the first one, is, uh, is the past of the company because it's built on, the, on our legacy infrastructure. Uh, it still works, it's a good thing, but, uh, but we would like to uh, move forward from that. Custom development is uh, the second uh, uh, team that I worked in, and uh, we built the infrastructure, and it's uh, built on Heroku, as you could hear here before. And uh, I will talk about that later. And artificial intelligence marketing is a team that I recently joined, at, and we are facing uh, different uh, challenges here. So Automation Center was a ready product when I joined the team. Uh, it is a product that is meant to automate marketing uh, communication. And uh, I, as I said, it's a legacy thing. It's, it's a monolithic application. It's part of our, uh, our main application, which is built on the LAMP stack. Uh, you've probably seen applications like this. And it's ho uh, hosted on our internal infrastructure. The custom development. Uh, I've been in this team since the beginning, and uh, we have to build a stack that we work with. And uh, it was easy to do custom development because customers always came with a clearly defined definition of what they needed, and we just had to implement it, basically. Sure that happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's probably they thought that they needed something, and, and they needed something else, and we, we understood something different. You probably know the picture of this thing. But uh, it is hosted on an external infrastructure, and, and these are all independent and small developments. And uh, the third one is the artificial intelligence marketing. It's, it's a recent uh, thing. It's a data-oriented application uh, product, and uh, it's basically aiming to automate the work of uh, marketers. And it's also on their external infrastructure. Uh, XP. Uh, XP is not from role-playing games. It's extreme programming. It's something that I have to tell that uh, I think that we couldn't uh, do all these things. We couldn't uh, apply DevOps if we weren't uh, using the extreme programming methodology. Uh, we are working in teams, and uh, every team has a re clear responsibility, uh, a product that only that uh, team manages. And uh, it's a pity that extreme programming doesn't uh, give anything to, to do DevOps. So it's only the development part and, and uh, not much for, for operations part. So the first lesson I learned at Automation Center was, was about ownership. Uh, when I came to the company, I, I thought that DevOps was a job title. So, so you, you, can, you could be a DevOps engineer, and, and you were neither a developer, neither an operations guy, but someone who do, does uh, DevOps. And uh, it didn't really help that there was a team that was called DevOps here. So, <laughs> so 
this, this team was working on the legacy part of the application, so they were mostly operating the legacy part. Uh, the legacy is obviously uh, developed by lots of people who, who worked at the company and lots of people who are working currently. So uh, people develop and DevOps is operating and, and they develop something, but mostly operate. So I spent my des test days here and it all made sense. It, it was the definition that I looked for. It, they were guys that were doing ops and, and develop uh, in between, developing tools and, and sometimes touching the, the almighty production code that was, that was there and was created by someone else, but, but not theirs, really. Uh, this is not, I, I don't think that this is a good definition of DevOps, but, but something that I had that, at that time. Uh, it's heavily biased to, towards operations and, and uh, the most important thing here is that by doing only operations, you, you lack ownership of the code. You are just doing some part of the stuff. So after getting hired, I joined the automation center team and uh, our job was to develop and operate the automation center. This product is meant for marketers to automate their, their communications. It's, it's, it's a high volume thing. Uh, we are sending out 7 billion messages, emails, uh, monthly, so that's the whole population of the Earth every month. And the uh, automation center is meant to automate these communications. But, uh, but I would say it was mostly a part-time job. We were, we were working uh, full-time, but, uh, but we were only developing. And uh, we were only operating uh, automation center while in the office. It, it is a legacy application, so it was hard to maintain also. So, you know, this image, uh, we were only operating while in the office, and at the end of the day, we passed on to DevOps, and they were doing their stuff. Uh, we saw that they were tired, but it's their job, hey. They are getting paid for this, and who cares? But uh, then came the hiccups, and probably we never ever did send out uh, more or less messages than we should have sent. Uh, then, development completely stopped and, and we were focusing on, on really not sending more or less messages. And uh, we ca came to feel that we have to change uh, more and more things, but, uh, but we, we were feeling that we couldn't take risks. There was this another team that uh, were operating and, and they were waking up uh, in the middle of the night if, if something went wrong. So when, when the time came that uh, we had problems with time zone, uh, time zones, uh, as we are doing scheduling of, of messages. Uh, we wanted to introduce a change that could result in manual interventions and, and fear, felt that we couldn't really afford uh, introducing these changes, they would have to wake up. So at this time, we were feeling that they were owning Automation Center and not us. It, this, is a, this is a strange feeling because we were the Automation Center team and we were meant to develop this stuff, but we, were, we didn't uh, feel like uh, that. Uh, ops over operated, we developed, and, and there was no real owner. Uh, we decided that we would take over the, the operations part temporarily to do our stuff, the, the change that we wanted. And that, that's when the pain came. Uh, we, we saw that to operate Automation Center, you had to do lots of manual interventions. Uh, there are jobs that are operating as the automation part, and uh, we had to prioritize manually because there were some times that, that were, there were higher load and, and lower load and lots of manual things. And uh, also jobs were failing because of communication errors and other errors, but we had to manually intervene at that time too. Uh, the, the reason that this was in this bad shape is not that the uh, DevOps team was lazy, but, but because they had other things to do. They were the owners of lots of different uh, products and, and it, it was not a good state. So we decided that we would take over the, the whole operations and not just temporarily. And uh, at first, uh, 
we were executing direct SQL queries for in opera during operations, and and it's not a good thing. You you wake up on the pager and and there is something bad, and uh, someone is relying on the service. You have to solve it as soon as possible, and uh, you have to execute a SQL query. No pressure. So so first we developed some tools that uh, allowed us not to uh, do this, but press some buttons and solve the, the event. And uh, slowly we got to know the, the different errors that came. And this allowed us to automate, uh, automate a prioritization of, of problems, automating uh, retrial of errors. And, and in the end, we got a good night of sleep during the duty. So this is one lesson that we learned at, at this phase, is that uh, ownership is key to do DevOps. And uh, you can't operate a service that you do not own. And uh, since then, uh, the whole company learned this lesson. And uh, every team has to do their own op operations. And, and uh, we do not allow that there, there be uh, a team that does the operations part for others. So are we there yet? Are we doing real DevOps now? Uh, I would say no, because it was still the legacy application we are speaking of. It's hard to deploy. It's, uh, uh, um, it encloses multiple products, and it's not a single thing that we are deploying. So it's a hard to deploy. Uh, alerting and monitoring is, is done from, from application code somewhat, and, and there is the ELK infrastructure behind this. And the whole infrastructure was, was rigid, and, and we, didn't, we couldn't uh, change it uh, for us, ourselves. So the second lesson was to that we had to have a good tool chain that allowed us to, to change and uh, react. Uh, so the definition of DevOps is somewhat changed for me. Uh, so it's both doing both development and operations of, of something that's there. So custom development was a new team. Uh, this meant that we, custom development meant that we have to develop something for a single customer, single customer's needs. It's a very focused thing. It's uh, not that you have to uh, find out what customers need in a certain way. That you have to, you had to uh, find out a single customer's needs and not multiples. We had some t so somewhat defined uh, detailed specs of, uh, of services and, and uh, the challenge we had we faced here was mostly uh, providing an inf uh, an architecture an infrastructure that uh, could allow us to develop custom developments so we had this problem to where do we start with this uh, we didn't want to invent anything new here uh, we also knew that uh, we didn't we wouldn't want to use the infra internal infrastructure because it wasn't flexible enough to host these custom developments. Uh, the, internet the internal infrastructure is there, and uh, it's great, and it works. But uh, every th change has to go through the system, SysTech team that uh, manages the infrastructure part. So that wouldn't be real DevOps. But uh, we had uh, other teams doing uh, using Heroku and uh, external providers for the toolchain part. So we just decided to go with that. But uh, we had no experience with this. Both uh, of the, all of the team members uh, were using uh, the in internal infrastructure before, so it was new to us. Uh, the infra uh, the it, it, uh, also, we, we decided to use a new stack, because that's what we had experience as a company with. It was based on JavaScript. So JavaScript was new to us, and, and we really didn't have much uh, experience with what we decided to go with. Uh, the Bohr stack, this is what uh, the JavaScript stack that uh, we have developed is called. It's uh, maintained by the community of, uh, of JavaScript developers at the company. And it's, there is lots of uh, work that has been put in this. But uh, what we got with this stack was not only the framework, the JavaScript framework and the uh, client framework and serv server framework, but also uh, a whole tool chain of, of DevOps tools. 
uh, testing tools, uh, testing framework, uh, deployment tool. We used Codechip uh, logging and monitoring tools. Uh, that, uh, it's log entries that we use for this. And uh, also database uh, hosting that all, all of these have been already uh, integrated in, in a way that uh, we just had to use it. But uh, it's, it's not only the, the tool chain that, that was there, but also the architecture that we didn't have to think about. Uh, having a good architecture is, is uh, important if you want to, to do DevOps, because uh, if, if you are having a, a wired together monolithic application, then that won't allow you to do uh, deployments and, and testing at your own pace and, uh, and uh, needs. And uh, the architecture that allowed us to do uh, great custom developments was that uh, the other teams were already doing small services that we called feature services. Uh, these are not microservices, but it's from somewhat uh, bigger. This means that uh, products are served by, the, by a single service, and uh, the different teams operate these services by themselves. Uh, this allows a single team to take all the responsibility for a single service. Uh, another key aspect is the 12-factor app guideline that you uh, should uh, know already. It uh, defines some aspects that allows one to, to operate a service without much pain on, uh, on uh, many uh, platforms that are already on the, internet, on the, uh, on the web. <coughs> so this all allowed uh, a single team to operate these services. And uh, all of this knowledge was there. Uh, the developers who did this already uh, were available for us, and uh, there was uh, knowledge sharing between us. We have uh, guilds uh, regularly had uh, at the company, and we share all this knowledge. So it's not just a single team fighting with the infrastructure, but we are together and, and, and uh, sharing this information. So the lesson we learned here is that uh, you have to have a good DevOps tool chain to do DevOps. And uh, this was one that allowed us to move forward and, uh, and uh, develop. So we, you can ask the question again that are we there yet? Do we have real DevOps now? Uh, I think that at this point, development and operations is great. and. Uh, the only shortcoming that you have is that we had is that uh, we had rigid specifications that came from outside. Uh, we didn't have uh, specialists in our in, in our team, so we were developers and uh, we got specifications that we implemented. So that's the next lesson, the third team: uh, artificial intelligence marketing. Uh, at this team, we, develop, we are developing actively still a new product that is uh, still under uh, so it's still under development. It's a new product and uh, it's about automating based on data. So it's a data-driven uh, product. Uh, we already already learned from DevOps that uh, you are doing development operations and have a great tool chain, but uh, where you fall, we fall short, I fall short mostly, is uh, that uh, we were not uh, finding out the requirements for ourselves, but got it from outside. It, uh, this project uh, enclosed a new technology uh, besides uh, the new product. The technology that we had to uh, use here is a uh, one that allowed us uh, to uh, analyze uh, huge loads of data. Uh, it's something new. Before this uh, project, we only uh, analyzed data in our internal infrastructure, so we had to experiment here a lot. And uh, we decided to use uh, Google's uh, Google services, uh, Google App Engine, uh, not App Engine, but uh, BigQuery, Big Data. And, uh, it was very important at this phase that uh, our team could decide by ourselves and uh, 
what what we would go with and uh, also uh, we didn't really have to rely on other uh, other uh, parties inside the company to decide and uh, and the registration and and all parts were were done by us we were doing is this by ourselves so this is a, an, an important aspect of autonomy of a team is that uh, the devops team should be able to to experiment and find out for this, the technology for themselves and uh, the other aspect of uh, of the autonomy that we we are having now is that uh, we are creating a product and uh, this time uh, we have a product manager in the team and uh, we are he's not finding out the specifications by himself but we are to, uh, doing together the defi uh, define definition part two we are running designs we have run a design sprint and uh, story, story mappings to find out uh, the requirements that we would like to fulfill and uh, it's it's a teamwork and not uh, not something that uh, as a developers team we got from out, our, uh, outside. So this is the lesson that we learned at this part is that uh, other than than uh, owning the code that you work with and uh, having a good tool chain that allows you to work, you also have to uh, have autonomy uh, in your uh, in the development to not rely on, on external parties because uh, this allows uh, faster mm, moving forward. So these are the th uh, three things that I learned here. Uh, is that first is that you have to have ownership of the code that you are operating or product instead of code. Uh, you have to have a great tool chain that, that allows you to do DevOps and uh, you have to have autonomy during this process. Questions? Yep. So do I have a question that if you get two devs, can we achieve only if you don't implement customer request, how do you implement your own? No, uh, it, it doesn't, it, it is not really a contrast that, uh, so it, it was a different uh, requirement here uh, at, at the custom development. So it's different, but uh, something that is often overlooked is that uh, DevOps should be so uh, autonomous that all parts of the development is handled by a single team. So in the custom development, we didn't have a requirement to find out the, the needs of a customer, but uh, at artificial intelligence, we did have this uh, need. And it was a great thing that we had, uh, we did this in the same team and not, uh, from an external party. To, to phrase it a different way, <clears throat> in one case you have a customer who comes with a solution that he needs, in the other case you have a customer who comes with a problem and you need to find a solution. And it's better if you, if you have the space to move around with finding the solution. So you really like the, uh, the autonomy part? I think that, that makes a lot of sense. What kind of uh, feedback loop do you have? So let's say you work a sprint, and then how do you learn from it? Like if, if you want to have autonomy, the team has to improve themselves. Do you have retrospectives, or do you have any, what's, what's the way to improve the, the, the problem? Yeah, uh, as we are doing extreme programming, we are having all these uh, practices that extreme programming defines retrospectives too. And uh, it's an important part that uh, the team as a whole uh, comes together, and that means also the product manager of the team. So uh, it means that all of us is in the same place, uh, and and we are getting the conclusions together, and that. Uh, and how do you change things? So, what? When do you change? When do you change your, your the way you do it? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Like, is it how do you decide that we should do it somehow different? Let's say, who's like, let's say you are. You, what what kind of change do you? Let's think? say you have one week sprint, and like in the retrospective, everybody says that one week is not enough to uh, finish work. Yep. So is there a team decision that says like let's do two week sprints, or is there a product manager decision that let's do two? Weeks? It's uh, mostly together. So so we are all so there is a separate team lead of the team and uh, the product manager and. Uh, 
it's not the same uh, thing. So there is not a single leader that uh, decides who decides what to do, and uh, it, it it is mostly a, a a common decision as a team. So, do you have uh, isolated teams, or do you, do you do you have teams using each other's services? Uh, we do not have internal providers, if that's what you're asking. Uh, but the products depend on each other, and um, handle the communication and the yeah. changes. Yeah. Um, some uh, so we are aiming for not uh, having internal depend dependencies there are no teams that are only uh, providing for inside uh, uh, cons uh, customers but uh, there is always development be uh, dependency between these uh, products and uh, there is no clear no, there is not a clear uh, guideline on on how to communicate but was a recent change in in uh, in the, in the company is that uh, we created uh, so-called clans and uh, that means that uh, the products that are more clo more closely related to each other are the teams that are developing these products that are related are uh, got together in a in a bigger team so so it's yeah to not break each other's Uh, what, in what sense? So yeah, it's it more tribal it. here. I guess it's more tribal, so they, they find a solution and it's not the process control. So if I change an API, yeah. half others have to wake up because uh, I, I release it at midnight and uh, they won't work. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it has to be handled by the, the teams that they communicate with the others. So it's, there is not, not a no process here for this. What's your strategy? Oh, right. So uh, you mentioned that you have a lot of um, a lot of freedom in choosing your technology, yeah. you using your team for solving specific problems, which would then, I assume, mean that different teams in the company use different technologies. Yeah. Uh, so what's your strategy for making sure that as teams change, people leave, people come, maybe switch teams, you don't lose knowledge of those special technologies used only in a few teams? Uh, I mentioned the guilds. So there are times that uh, we come together and uh, the, we have presentations, internal meetups that they very uh, tell each other about technology and stuff. You mentioned that you decided the features for the new product uh, that you're developing now. Uh, did, does that mean that the team actually did market research for the features? Like what do customers want? Uh, yeah, that, that's a special case because we have a, a product manager from, from the higher management and uh, he is not really the part yet of the team in this case. But uh, <coughs> the, the market research was not done by us in this case. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's uh, mostly, it, it, it should have been done by the team. Thank you.